Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our pre presentation tonight on the Grand Oaks Feeder Elementary and Intermediate Attendance Boundary Zones. I have a couple of special people here with me. I'm Chris McCord, Assistant Superintendent of Operations, but I would like to introduce first Rod Chavez. He is our Director of Community Outreach and Dropout Prevention. Rod is important because he's on this uh, call today, but he also, Rod will be translating uh, this uh, presentation into Spanish. It will be on our website, our attendance boundary website in the coming days. Also, I have our deputy superintendent, Dr. Christopher J. Hines. So he is also on board with us tonight. And if you're saying to yourself that name sounds familiar, it does for good reason, because he is the namesake of the school that is the main reason we are here tonight. And that is the Dr. Christopher J. Hines Elementary School which is being developed and built, located at 4550 Lexington Boulevard in Spring, just south of Grand Oaks High School. It's going to be opening in August of 2023. We are very excited about it. It'll be a kindergarten through four school. I've got uh, just a few objectives to go over, then I'll show you some pictures that I think you will enjoy. So our committee has been working, really the core committee has been working since the spring. Uh, our Formal committee started in August. We've been working basically almost every Thursday for a couple of hours, uh, Thursday afternoons to get to where we are today. We've been through 29 iterations of scenarios just so we can get what's best for everyone and most importantly, what's best for children. But the three objectives, the main things that we've been working on is to develop an attendance boundary for Dr. Christopher J. Hines Elementary School, which is on Lexington. We're looking at potential boundary changes that would impact Cox and Clark. And really specifically, the issue we have, Clark is significantly over capacity at this time. And we're anticipating, based on what we've been told by the developers and are seeing happening, boots on the ground in Woodson's Reserve, many, many more thousands of homes coming on board. And those students will be going to the Grand Oaks feeder. And on the intermediate school site right now, as it sits, those kids would go to Clark, which is already significantly over capacity. And we've been looking at the possibility of what we can do to help provide crowding and uh, future capacity relief to the other Grand Oaks Elementary campuses along the way. So today, tonight, we're going to go through and just kind of show you some of the things we've been working on. And uh, a good start will be to show you the front of the school. And this is the front east. If you would be looking at this from the east toward the west, this is the front entrance or facade of Christopher J. Hines Elementary. Uh, we already have two buildings that are largely very identical to this building. That would be Gordon Reed, uh, that Gordon Reed Elementary in the Conroe Zone, and it would be Reuben Hope Elementary in the Caney Creek Zone. This is the uh, front entrance for Christopher J. Hines Elementary via computer rendering, and this is from the air. Looking from the east back toward the west, you can see Lexington. At the very top right, you can see Woodson's Reserve. To the left, you would end up going to Clark Intermediate. If you were to go right, you would go to Grand Oaks High School. You would go north and end up eventually at the Grand Parkway. So you can see here, if you follow the cursor, here's the front of the building. You can see the uh, bus loop. You can see the cafeteria, the gymnasium, the academic wing. One thing that I think that parents are really going to like is we have about 2,000 feet of queuing space to be able to get cars off the road. And so we have a very lengthy winding queuing space that will accommodate somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 cars. So very excited about that. Here is the interior of the school. This would be one of the main parts and main focuses of the school, the, the stage of the, caf the cafeteria, the library here to the right. And if you can see the cursor and follow the cursor, this would be headed east out toward the front door. So we're excited about it. We have two buildings on the ground already, and they're, uh, they've been very well received by the students, the teachers, and the communities in which they serve. So this will be the third one of this iteration. And once again, it'll be two, two stories. So we've worked through a lot of things and the zoning goals, I'm not going to read them all to you. I would say uh, just to draw your attention to the bottom uh, bullet in that we're working together and we've been taking community input for many weeks and actually many months. Uh, this will be our third community gathering tonight. We'll have another one on Thursday night at York Junior High at six o'clock, but we received a lot of feedback. It's been good. We've even had a lot of scenarios submitted by the community and we've considered all of those. And so ultimately what will happen is we will present a recommended plan at the elementary level and the intermediate level to the board of trustees. And our plan now is to present that plan for their potential approval in January. 
If approved, then we can move forward with the hiring of a administration staff and all the things that go into making up the people that make up a school, as well as notifying families that would potentially be moved to a new school. I, I would tell you on the zoning considerations, we take these things very seriously, which is one reason why we spent so much time in our meetings working to get it right. I would tell you that we are not done building schools in Grand Oaks. And you know, once we had one time we had only Cox Intermediate, then we had a Clark Intermediate, but there are many, many, many more thousands of students and families that are coming to the Grand Oaks feeder zone. So there will be more elementaries added in all likelihood and more intermediate schools added in all likelihood. And then we'll see what happens at the secondary level. So all those things are considered and we, uh, we take them very seriously. I would tell you as a point of emphasis, I talked about the third bullet, but we're provided, we're committed to providing a quality experience at all the schools, all the elementaries and all the intermediates and the one junior high and the high school we have right now in Grand Oaks. So we, uh, we're committed at all the schools, regardless of where a student or a child may go, because we know how important the education in the school is to families. I would, I would like to salute the team. We've had a great team for many months working with us, representing all the different areas within the Grand Oaks feeder, uh, parents, principals, members of the uh, school district. So I appreciate their hard work because we've worked a lot of hours and it's really made a difference to get to some quality uh, possible suggestions as we close in on the middle of November. So this is a good time to stop and look at where we are currently in elementary zones in Grand Oaks. So just some things that stand out, the two areas that we have to get help for the most that are way over capacity, right around 140% right around for both of them are, are Snyder and Broadway. So if you see Snyder, its current zone is in purple. Excuse me, Broadway, its current zone is in purple. Snyder is in yellow. And notice that Snyder zone in yellow represents a very wide geographical area. And a lot of this is not developed yet, but the area in which my pointer is going right here in Woodson's Reserve, this is the most immediate area of growth and where we have a, maybe a couple of thousand homes coming. And the reason we're looking at uh, uh, putting Heinz Elementary, which happens to be right here where you see number 65 on my pointer within this area of Woodson's Reserve. And then so Clark is right just south of this where you see number 60. So that area is going to be developed. It's worth saying just here, Burnham Woods is represented in brown, Bradley in pink, uh, Ford in green, and we said Broadway in purple, Snyder in yellow. The one thing to note too, just a lot of the build out in Grand Oaks is gonna be determined about how quickly uh, Townsend Boulevard is developed. Townsend Boulevard quickly, if you look at the pointer, comes out here just around Deerbrook Mall. There are tentative plans to extend Townsend all the way from here, connecting into the area around Imperial Promenade and going all the way through this undeveloped land, which kind of parallels the San Jacinto River and connecting all the way through to Deerbrook Mall. Note, all of this cannot be connected. Some of this area down here is wetlands and the lower area would not be able to be developed. There is a sand pit area right about here and a sand pit area right about here. They're very valuable for construction, but they would not be able to be developed by homes. I want you to know that the entire committee along the way, one thing that we've heard from patrons and we know is important is uh, the, the desire to keep neighborhoods together. And all neighborhoods are not together now. We work hard to try to do it. But I want you to know that's been an important consideration from us. You can go back and look if you need to know where uh, neighborhoods are. This slide is in this presentation. You can freeze it or take a picture of it. It's very helpful. and gives you an idea of where current neighborhoods are because this has been a major consideration of the committee along the way. So we are currently, like I said, we have 21 scenarios under consideration at the elementary level. Within that, we have two that are in play. And this is the first one, and it is version scenario 6.1. Just the things I would point out under scenario 6.1, you can see Burnham Woods in brown. You can see a potential Christopher J. Hines Elementary School zone in gray, Snyder in yellow, Broadway in pink. You can see uh, Broadway in the purple and Bradley in pink. And you see Ford in green off to the west, Spring Creek Pines and Fox Run for Ford. So this is 6.1. And so you can see here, uh, really Bradley would not be impacted that much. You would see this area here, which is Grand Imperial Marketplace, C57 and B57 that are undeveloped. Those would go from Burnham Woods 
to Heinz Elementary. Currently, this area is a YMCA under development, and I believe an apartment complex. B57 is undeveloped. So in 6.1 and 7.0, the two scenarios we have at the moment, both those areas would go from Burnham Woods to Heinz, and no one lives in those areas at this exact moment. But since Burnham Woods is at capacity, or actually over capacity at 103%, that gives some insurance for Burnham Woods if this area becomes developed. If you look here for Heinz, we would like for Heinz Elementary to be under 750 when we open. Uh, we're going to have a whole lot more kids coming to Heinz, no matter how we draw the line. And it has a capacity of 950. Snyder, which is currently right at 137%, and in version 6.1 would now be at 85% of capacity. Uh, Bradley would say would, would be about 101% of capacity. Broadway, which is at right now at 143% of capacity, would be at 100% capacity. So we obviously are not done building schools with all the kids and families that are coming to the great area, but this is what you would get as far as numbers. This shows you the outgoing and incoming numbers from Broadway and Snyder and Hines as to what they would look like. I would draw special attention to Allegro at Harmony, which is area section 57T. The two areas that differ between 6.1 and the next one I'm going to show you, 7.0, are Allegro, which is Allegro is 57T. Allegro has 209 students that live there. And uh, also right here, the Villages at Harmony, 57R, you're looking at 174 kids. So this is 6.1 and this is 7.0. You can see the numbers are fairly stable across the board because they're fairly static among those two sections. But you can see in 6.1, Allegro would go to Snyder and the Villages at Harmony would go to Broadway. In 7.0, Allegro would go to Broadway and the Villages at Harmony would go to Snyder. So that is the basic differences between 6.1 and 7.0. Uh, and so we're looking at it, here's our numbers. Hans opens around 742 either way, which is about 78% of capacity. Now realize that that is geocoded with just the kids that live and sleep there. So kids that are on transfer, that number will probably be north of 750, but we have to get a number at Hines knowing we're gonna have a whole lot more kids coming. So you can look, if you look at 57T and 57R, I'm going to toggle before them. This is 6.1 and this is 7.0, Allegro and Villages at Harmony. So it's important to know the cohorts. The cohorts is what we call this slide. This could also be called the slide of the kids I know the first day I walk in the door or the kids I know the first day I walk in the door and I eat lunch. So you can see we have a significant number going from Snyder to Hines a significant number going from Broadway to Snyder so that every child hopefully will have multiple people that he or she knows. And the numbers are pretty consistent between 6.1 and 7.0 as far as the cohorts. So that is the elementary portion. You can go back and obviously replay it and look at it to your, as your leisure all you want. You can submit comments as far as what you like. If you like one version over the other, please let us know. And so uh, that will be available on our website. I will show you the website at the end. It is prominently pictured when you go to the Conroe ISD website. You can't miss it. It's the first thing you see. I'm going to segue to the intermediate zones. And just looking at the intermediate zones, remember the issue is right here is Heinz Elementary. So you've got Heinz Elementary over here, 65, within Woodson's Reserve. You have Clark down here in 60. Then you're going to have Cox over here. And when you have Cox over here at 46, the issue is, is that right now Clark is well over capacity, and this is where the growth is coming. There could be a little bit more growth at Cox, but the overwhelming number of kids are going to be coming from the area in pink. So this is the current intermediate zone. The main line uh, that divides them, although not perfectly, is Burnham Woods Drive. And you can see as you go up Burnham Woods Drive, you cross 99. The exceptions would be Legends Run, 57J, 57J has 133 students, and 57Y, which is Legends Trace, which has 66 students. So Burnham Woods is not perfect, but basically everything on the right or east of Burnham Woods will go, goes currently to Clark, with the exception of Legends Run and Legends Trace, 
and a portion of the falls as Burnham Woods extends up. So you can go back and freeze it. It's also on our website, but this is the current intermediate zone for Grand Oaks. Remember at one time, originally everybody went to Cox in 2018, building number 60 here, which is Clark was open. And that's when uh, we had to divide the first time for Grand Oaks. So we have one scenario under consideration. And you can see now that Clark is at 115% of capacity and Cox is at 91% of capacity. If those numbers were reversed, there really wouldn't be a reason to even have to consider this. It would be, it would work out really effectively, but they're not. They are what they are with the growth coming at Clark. The scenario that the committee has uh, working on right now that has been an overwhelming favorite of the committee is the one you see in front of you. You can see everything in pink on the east would go to Clark, everything in yellow on the west would go to Cox. You can see the two places that are impacted are right here, Legends Run, which is 57J, and 57Y, which is Legends Trace. That's potentially, we're not done. We're subject to comment and your uh, suggestions, but this is the scenario of the eight scenarios that we've looked at at the intermediate level. This is the one we're on right now, scenario 1.0. 57Y, Legends Trace, 57J, Legends Run would be changing. It'd be 199 kids would be impacted. And we under, we realize that these are numbers, but we also realize these are real families and real students, which is why we take this process so seriously and why we work on it with such diligence over such a long time. But you see what would happen with scenario one, you'd see a little bit of a flip-flop knowing that this number right here at Clark is going to balloon quickly with all the kids that are going to be coming to the zone that's currently in pink for Clark Intermediate School. So that's scenario one. And you can certainly give us your comments at the website, what you think about this scenario 1.0. But that's where we are right now on the intermediate level with right under 200 kids going. So the good news is that uh, students would know a lot of people from the first day. And then just like all we did, we did, they would quickly make friends, new friends, but know a lot of people would be going. I want to cover just a few of the common questions that we get. And one common question we get is something along the lines of our family specifically purchased our home to attend the school we're currently attending. Why are you consider re considering rezoning our school? Well, as the area continues to grow, just like every area that has a school, uh, you constantly have to establish boundaries when you build new schools. Basically, every school that's ever been built had to have an attendance boundary built for it. Now, in a small rural area, the, basically the elementary school would be the entire district. But in our case, where we're adding all the time, we have to constantly readjust. And we want those zones to always make sense for all those reasons that we gave you earlier under the, the goals and considerations. They need to make sense for all those factors, for the families that are there, plus the families that are coming, knowing that most of us don't live exactly where we live right now. We move there and it's important, it's important at any given time that the zones and the areas for the attendance boundary for a school make sense for all those reasons, because it's real kids going back and forth for real families to those schools. So what grade levels will be impacted? We're looking at kindergarten through fourth grade. So we're looking at kindergarten through fourth grade, but the primary thing that we're working on right now being populating Christopher J. Hines Elementary, which by the way, will open in fall of 2023, which is not that long off. <clears throat> so question we get, how likely is it that my neighborhood will be rezoned? Well, we'll know for sure once we go through the process. The scenarios you see show you where we are right now as a committee, but we are by no means done. We have another month and a half or two to get through this and make sure we continue to hone and get exactly what's best for kids. So we do anticipate some changes being made. And so we would like to be able to do more things to help uh, other schools such as Ford and Bradley and do more for Burnham Woods. With what we have with this one building, knowing that we're going to need more buildings, uh, we can only do so much and make it work for everybody. But uh, I salute the committee because they've done a great job of taking those things into consideration so far. As far as special programs such as Title I, bilingual, special ed, and pre-K, those things will be determined at the end administratively once we know what the board is, the zone is approved by the school board. But we will make it where it works well for all and take care of kids and make sure that we have a great experience wherever a student wants to go. So this is probably the most common question I get, is what about current students finishing the last year at their campus? So I want you to know that we traditionally have allowed families to remain at a particular school to complete the final year 
for a kid who's going into the final year at that campus, as long as the parent can provide transportation. And if there's a student there who's going, and if he has a younger sibling, uh, we will, if it's in the same family of the student going into their last year at the campus, we traditionally have allowed them to transfer once again, as long as the parents can provide transportation to them. So that will probably be an option. And uh, I don't see anything on the numbers right now that looks like it would preclude that. But a kid going into their last year of the school traditionally has been allowed to achieve a transfer provided parents can provide transportation. As far as how often the area might be rezoned, we don't know for sure. We, will, we, do, we work hard to not rezone for the sake of rezoning. We do know this movie is not over in Grand Oaks because there are thousands and thousands and thousands of more homes coming to the area. So we understand how it's important it is. We try to make that length of time go as long as we can. We try not to rezone a child from one school more than once if we have to do it at all. But we're committed to providing an outstanding school and experience regardless to what school a child and ultimately a family are a part of. I do know, want you to know we have the attendance boundary process webpage here and it will show you the 21 scenarios that we've looked at for elementary zones and we're considering. It'll show you the two that we currently are uh, considering strongly, the 20 and the 19 that are no longer under consideration. In the intermediate area, it will show you the one that is being considered by the committee and the other seven that are no longer under consideration. And I, I encourage you, if you have comments, uh, to let us know. And if you like a, if you like a version, you know the comments that you like are just as important as the comments if you don't like. And let us know. Uh, the committee sees all those. We obviously see all those, and the school board ultimately sees those. And is this is centrally located on the web page when you go to the district website. And all those are read. I, we read them constantly. And I encourage you to use it if you like to. Uh, Dr. Hines has been doing zoning for 20 years, besides being a deputy superintendent and besides having a school named after him by the school board. Dr. Hines, anything you would like to add on, elaborate? No, I think I, mean, I think you, you covered everything and, and the committee has done an outstanding job working on this. Uh, I think what's difficult and probably something we've all struggled with on the intermediate discussion is really looking at when is the next intermediate going to be built? And we don't know the answer to that uh, until we have a future bond issue. And so we just don't know um, what the timing is, but that would have a lot to do with, you know, trying to decide, do we wait, do we go? Um, but we do know we're going to run out of space at Clark here in the next couple of years, and we're going to need to have a solution until a new intermediate school is built. So, um, but I think, you know, you've covered all the main points and thank you. So, hey, a couple of things just to note, this will be recorded and it will be on the attendance boundary website. And thanks to Mr. Chavez, it'll be recorded in Spanish and put on the website. We will be uh, at North Junior High Thursday night, which will be November 10th, the day after tomorrow, in the cafeteria at six o'clock in person. Uh, we will have some boards to show if you want to see the scenarios as, as a map, as a poster. And but these are also at the website. And we appreciate your time on this Tuesday evening. And that's all we have. Thank you for taking time to come visit with us. Have a great evening. We appreciate you. Thank you.